Well, over one, earlier in our last video, we kind of dispelled the myth that this storm had a chance of becoming a hurricane. But, you know, it kind of seems that it's time to start talking about whether or not this storm even has the potential of becoming Dexter in the first place. A couple of days ago to last night, our tropical disturbance started off down over here, kind of tracked up to the north, and now it is back up in this region, still over land. So it hasn't even become a tropical depression or a tropical storm yet. And on satellite, it's looking pretty disorganized. We've got a lot of showers and thunderstorms pushed off of our main center back over here because we have an upper level flow coming in around like this from a high pressure system that is further off to the north. But there are still some thunderstorms and showers happening here. In order for this storm to be named Dexter, this would have to become a tropical storm. And as of right now, we are still dealing with a 40% chance of this thing developing over the next two days. So not a whole lot has changed since yesterday because when we started off yesterday, this thing was basically over land and it still kind of is over land. Now, one of the scenarios we are still watching out for is whether or not our tropical system can develop a new mid-level circulation. Right now, our low-level circulation is back over here, so that's our center of low pressure. And potentially, we have a mid-level circulation somewhere uh, in this general area. If you think of our circulation as a 3D tube, saying that this is like our low level circulation, you have our wind coming out of this direction. What that's doing is kind of pushing the tube off over into this direction. And our mid-level circulation is way out uh, over the ocean. So when you draw that over here, you can see our circulation is coming through like that. And there's our winds aloft. And then our tube is kind of extended out over here because of that wind shear pushing a lot of our thunderstorms storm activity off to the west you can see kind of our mid-level circulation should be somewhere in this general area it's kind of hard to see right now because we really just don't have a good look at it with satellite but overall it's kind of looking like a messy system typically in order to see a storm strengthen not only do you need that center of low pressure that surface low to be over water and not over land one of the things that we look for is a tube of circulation that looks more like this more vertically stacked and that allows the storm to be a little bit more efficient in transferring that heat energy into wind rain and much more but one of the scenarios that i think is still technically possible but I think it's getting a little bit lower as we go into the future, but it's still technically possible, is that we get a completely new system trying to develop underneath the mid-level circulation. So we have our surface low over here, but what can sometimes happen is you can actually get a surface low develop under a mid-level circulation, which that mid-level circulation is back over here. Now that's a little bit rare, especially in times like this when we have a lot of wind that will immediately try to stretch any lower level circulation and tilt it and preventing it from becoming vertically stacked. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, at least tropical depression or maybe at max a tropical storm is possible. So, or is it possible? Now looking at our water surface temperatures where this disturbance is sitting right now, you can see that our mid-level circulation is sitting over around 30 to 31 degrees Celsius, which again, 26 is that low point. 30 degrees is quite elevated in terms of temperature and a lot of heat energy that this storm can tap into and kind of treat it like it's fuel, you know, treat it like it, the, the storm is an engine and, and the water temperatures are fuel and 30 degrees Celsius is like high octane fuel, almost jet fuel for a tropical system. But as you might be able to easily imagine, these water temperature readings are at the surface. And if you don't have a lower level circulation to kind of tap into that, it'd be hard for anything to form out over in the Gulf of Mexico, but we do still have some time and we still do have to look out for some surprises because as you can see, the Gulf of Mexico is primed for a surface low and primed for strengthening. But that's not all. You need a moist environment and also less wind shear. And that wind shear can kind of stretch our circulation and make it a little bit less vertically stacked, meaning less of a chance of strengthening. So coming over to one of our hurricane models, the first thing that we're going to be looking at is whether or not we have enough moisture over the area where our mid-level circulation. And the first thing that kind of jumps out me in comparison to old model runs, we can actually go look at previous model runs at this time. You can see that they were calling for a lot more moisture 
by this time. But if I come over uh, to the current time, you can see a lot less darker green there, meaning we actually have a little bit less moisture than what was forecast. So that is one of the things that's also keeping this storm at bay. And as you can see, before it goes into Louisiana, we are still expecting that moisture to increase. And as you can see, you know, the H fast A parent hurricane model does still try to develop something there on the very southern edge of Louisiana. But that would be maybe a tropical depression at most. Now, looking at our wind shear in the area, as I move this forward, you can see that, you know, we do have a little bit of wind shear back over here and a little bit uh, back over here associated with our high pressure system. This is that wind shear that's coming across our storm, pushing and stretching that mid-level circulation like we were talking about. It's coming out of this area and then coming down to the south and east and hitting that low pressure, that surface low and kind of stretching out that circulation so it's not as vertically stacked as it wants to be but over where our mid-level circulation is there's really not that much wind shear so there is still definitely some chances that this storm could potentially try to develop into a tropical depression and we're still watching out for surprises especially with how hot that water temperature is off the coast of louisiana if that surface low does redevelop back over the ocean it could be an, a little bit of an issue i still think we're talking about at the very top tippy top of our ceiling is a weak tropical storm i'd be surprised if we can get much stronger than that but that's a thing you know sometimes we do get surprises so we do i think i think it's still a little bit too early to completely rule out a tropical storm at this point but I Everything that I'm seeing so far is pointing to this thing, uh, you know, barely being able to reach that, if not just not doing it at all. Another thing that we can look at is where this storm is going, uh, according to our models. And as you can see, our low pressure system over here is forecasted to kind of just track over in the northern portion of the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to be interacting with land a lot um, and then uh, just kind of goes off to the north and east. That mid-level circulation forms, we will have a little bit more of a, uh, or if that mid-level circulation uh, forms a lower level area of circulation, that will cause for actually a brand new track uh, to be made. As, as you can see, this model track guidance is tracking our surface low, which is back over here. But generally speaking, our original surface load does not have much of a chance to become anything really at all. You see, we got some pretty good agreement on that. Really not a whole lot of time to re-enter back over the ocean. And it's got to deal with that a little bit drier air and also redeveloping its circulation over water to even tap into the water or to the ocean at all. I mean, we're talking about maybe 12 hours uh, for this thing to kind of strengthen just a little bit. But with a weak surface circulation that it already has right now is going to be really hard for it to do. If you look at our intensity guidance, I think this is the best way to summarize my thoughts. These are almost pretty much right on to where I am thinking. It seems like the majority of our models keep this thing a non-issue for the majority of its lifetime. And only about three to maybe even four models bring it into that tropical storm strength. Now you can make an argument that could be four or five as some of these models didn't go all the way out to where these models go. I mean, these, these are extended models. These ones are a little bit shorter range models, but overall you can see that there are more models down way down below tropical storm strength, which is denoted by this green area. than there are models in that green area. So I think I'm leaning more to not a tropical storm, but I think it's still, especially for Louisiana, worth keeping an eye out for surprises for this thing to strengthen last minute into a tropical storm. But I just want to say that the, I even think that scenario, this even becoming Dexter in the first place, is actually between our two scenarios, between it becoming like a tropical depression and it becoming a tropical storm, I think between those two scenarios, the tropical storm one is probably our least likely. Now, if you look at all of our deterministic models here, you can see the GE. Uh, the GFS is still saying not a whole lot happens down here in the future. So again, just a lot of rain, potential flooding coming into the coast. Really no landfalls to be able to pick out there. Our Euro AI model is still picking up on a low, trying to redevelop back over here into southern Louisiana. This would pretty much be our only scenario if we get a mid-level circulation redevelop uh, over here to the south of Louisiana. Might get a tropical depression and at most if it like rapidly develops into a tropical storm. CMC model though is not really in that side of the scenario. It's saying a pretty weak storm down there. 
icon model, which has been pretty bullish, is actually kind of getting a little bit bullish again. You can see that it does try to develop a little low pressure si signature uh, over there just off of the toes of Louisiana, the pinky toe of Louisiana, maybe a tropical depression there kind of last minute right before it goes into Louisiana, which by comparison, a tropical storm typically or tropical depression typically has like 20 to 30 mile per hour winds, maybe 35 mile per hour wind gusts. You know, you're Average severe thunderstorm warning, you know, with those 60 mile per hour winds, one inch hail, those actually are twice as strong as what these winds will be like. Although these winds will be for a little bit longer, it's really not going to be that much of an impact whatsoever other than a little bit gusty. I would say the main impact is still going to be that flooding. We could have some cav catastrophic flooding uh, with this storm, and we'll be talking about that in just a little bit. But yeah, I mean, as you can see, the models are, are kind of congealing onto a solution here. It seems like every single day we come out out here um and it just seems like that this storm is going to be uh, generally weak and that's always been a scenario so if again if you've been watching folks that have been telling you that that is off of the table the weak storms and we're only going to get a hurricane those are over hypers and they've been lying to you this entire time so you should probably find a new person to watch you're welcome to subscribe to this channel or like the video but one important thing that we also have to talk about here is our flash flooding threat as this thing uh, kind of makes its way towards Louisiana today not going to be talking about much of a flash flooding threat really at all for most people tomorrow it starts to escalate a little bit over there near Baton Rouge New Orleans uh, Montague, Port Sulphur, Gulf Port. But then as we go into day three or about two days from now, you can see that Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Iberia, and Lake Charles are going to have to be really weather aware. Catastrophic flooding will be possible. Definitely want to take this day seriously in terms of that flood threat. Now, the HRRR model is really not a great model to try to figure out what a tropical storm is going to do, but this likely won't be one. So this will probably be pretty accurate in terms of our potential rainfall amounts over the next couple of days. And yeah, yeah, as you can see, as I push this forward, it doesn't really get too rainy until we start to get into about the 17th. And you can really see a lot of rain start to pile up, especially really from like south of New Orleans uh, all the way into like Lafayette uh, and over there near Lake Charles as well. Uh, and as I continue to push this forward, you can see that more rain just kind of sits out over there. And we're going to be talking about some pretty decent rainfall rates out of this storm as there is uh, eventually going to be a lot of moisture uh, around where this thing is going to be trying to form. Look at our total precipitation amounts. As you can see, we're going to be talking about anywhere from three to four, maybe even some isolated spots of up to eight inches possible. And right now it's further down to the south, but this could shift around before we get to the day. So really anybody from New Roads, Baton Rouge, Opelousas, uh, over there near Lake Charles, Lafayette, Montague, and south of New Orleans need to be flood aware as again, you know, we've seen a lot of bad flooding events this year already. This could be another one. So just make sure that you are flood aware and prepared to seek higher ground and have a plan in place to do so. Now, believe it or not, there might be a chance that I are pretty high chance. So it's almost guaranteed uh, that I go live today back over here in Wisconsin in northern Illinois. We're now talking about uh, the potential here for some severe weather. And as you can see out over here near Green Bay, Oshkosh, Madison, Milwaukee, Waukegan, Chicago, we do have a slight risk for severe weather. Also, another one back over here near Cheyenne, Denver, Colorado Springs and Pueblo could see some severe weather as in places like Wyoming. Wyoming, going all the way through Kansas, Missouri, Indiana, Michigan, going over there in Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, New York, maybe even in New Jersey, Maryland, Northern Delaware. But the main area that has my eye right now, especially for impactful severe weather, uh, is back over here. Yesterday, I will say, looking at the models, uh, right before I went to sleep last night, it escalated quite a bit, but then it kind of came back down, uh, I think a little bit more towards reality, but still, we're going to have this little shortwave trough that kind of moves off into this area, maybe a tornado threat starting by around 12 to 1 p.m. over there near La Crosse, and then eventually uh, over here near Madison, Reedsburg, over there near Beaver Dam, we're going to have a couple of isolated cells uh, in an environment where we're going to have our lower level shear slowly increasing also our upper level shear slowly increasing and because this is a short wave drop our surface winds are going to be pointed like this most likely and our upper level winds are going to be pointed like this so we're going to have quite the 
perpendicularity with this storm, and that is going to allow for a decent amount of storm relative listing. We could be talking about anywhere from 200 to 300 SRH will definitely support, you know, a tornado and maybe even a brief strong tornado. So just got to keep an eye out uh, on this storm. You know, there is no guarantee that this throws down a bunch of tornadoes, eh, but there is also that small chance that it kind of surprises us. It is July. You know how it goes. So I, if you live anywhere from like Madison over there near Milwaukee, uh, especially over there near Rockford as well, just in case these storms just form a little bit further south than what we're expecting. I'd be weather aware today for that tornado threat. But as this thing moves out over the Michigan Lake, this is mainly going to transfer into more of a damaging wind threat for Michigan. Also, off of the mountains of the Colorado Rockies, we're going to have some storms fire over here. And because of the way that the air moves in and around this area, there could be a little bit of an escalation here of a tornado threat. Very small chance, but not impossible uh, out over here. Your damaging wind threat might be a little bit too far to the south there. And our hail threat is uh, up there right where it needs to be so if you're out there we're not talking about really anything super significant but i would keep an eye out whenever we get these storms near these mountains mature this quickly they usually try to spit out a nato or two so even though it's just a two percent chance it's pretty conditional i would keep an eye on it now going into tomorrow's severe weather as you can see we're not really expecting too much to happen we get a marginal risk out there kind of a leftover boundary and a little bit of moisture is going to interact with each other to cause some thunderstorms generally from Missouri all the way into southern Illinois, Indiana, going into Ohio, West Virginia. Not really expecting much to come of that in terms of tornadic activity. But, you know, as we start really at around 1 p.m., those storms kind of happen and then they fizzle relatively quickly by 8 p.m. over there in Virginia. So if you live anywhere in this area, I'd definitely be weather aware. And then further back up uh, to the north and east, you can see we do have some storms potentially developing up here by 1 p.m. That moves into Vermont, eastern Pennsylvania by around 4 p.m., northern New Jersey, Massachusetts by 6 p.m. And then eventually kind of fizzles a little bit further up to the north by 8 p.m. with maybe still some severe weather possible by Philadelphia by 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. before moving out over the Atlantic Ocean by 10 p.m. Looking at our highs for today, you can see it has cooled off generally up here in the northern plains, and that is slowly moving uh, down into the Great Lakes region and the Ohio Valley. You can see it's going to be quite cool, really from Madison, north of Madison, Des Moines, mo north of Des Moines, and north of Lincoln. They're in Nebraska, Iowa, and Wisconsin, and down here in the southeast, it's still going to be hot. It's still going to be annoyingly muggy. Still not a very fun... <laughs> summer down here that heat has not relinquished really at all unless you've gotten a thunderstorm but yeah i mean 80s and 90s pretty much across the entire southeast going into the southern plains with still 100 degree temperatures hanging on over here west of phoenix and west of las vegas and still actually pretty hot 70 to 80 some pockets of 90 degree temperatures still up the entire eastern seaboard then as we move into the overnight hours you can see our cooler temperatures slowly push down a little bit further to the south we get a 3 p.m p.m. You can see cooler temperatures start to move into northern Missouri, into Kansas, maybe even Chicago over there just north of Detroit with some rain and showers bringing some relief uh, as that severe, that small severe weather chance happens over here. Could if you get some of those storms. Again, that's kind of like the best case scenario now in the summer is to be in a marginal risk with no tornado chance and get a little bit of a severe thunderstorm and you get that cool off. But the areas where it's still going to be pretty hot is going to be down here in the southeast and the central plains with still some 80s and 90s across the boards with maybe even some 100s creeping into southern Arkansas and northern Louisiana. And then back over here in the Pacific Southwest, man, look at that. Temperatures cooling down a little bit. Might even be in the 90s for once as we go into the 17th. But yeah, after that, uh, things are obviously going to cool down as we go into the nighttime hours. And that's going to be pretty much it for me for this forecast. But I do appreciate you guys tuning in as always. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.